Are you looking for a small light that can deliver a punch yet not break the bank? At just $2, this might be it. Has a tripod screw, built-in kickstand, magnet, and a beer opener. Shut up and take my money! Uh, I got a few. Hi, name's Alex Train, and these were truly a blessing with all the blackouts we had during winter. Yeah, there's plenty of reviews of these online. Well, almost all of them lack even the very basic testing. And you gotta have the nerve to try and sell them for $20 or even $50. I pride myself by using the products that appear on my channel and actually try to test them. So let's start with the battery life. I was always curious about the quality control on such dirt cheap items. So having the opportunity of a bigger sample size made me really excited. These have four modes, high, low, turbo, and strobe. We are promised from one and a half hours to three. And as you can see, the results can differ a lot, but they do around that or even exceed expectations, which is truly a breath of fresh air from the usually hyperinflated one of promises we tend to see from Chinese sellers. That reminds me of the power creep in CNC novels. The charge test is more of an indication how much it'll consume rather than the battery capacity. You can expect a full charge in about 90 minutes. And yes, this segment alone took around 40 hours of continuous filming as I only have one camera and one tester. Oh boy. The amount of time this review took, especially with all the blackouts, meaning I had to restart all the brightness testing and Adobe trying to break whatever still works in their Premiere Pro with infuriating continuous failures after one or two hours of rendering the segments that I have to take and then manually enter into the spreadsheet. So I can give you some factual information and pretty little charts. <sighs> and it had to be done only during the nighttime, as I need a large room in absolute darkness. But first, let's look more into the specs, features, and details. Right now, you can see the exact size, rounded to the closest millimeter, and weight info. And it's actually lighter than advertised. Being so affordable and small, you can buy a bunch and strategically place them in all your bags, cars, and all around your house. If there's ever an emergency or you just need a light handy. Let's first start with the tripod mounting, located at the very bottom. When used with something like a light stand, it works really well. Or anything where you can screw it in a little bit. On the other hand, anything with a tightening feature doesn't, as the hole is just too shallow. My on-camera monitor and light have a screw hole that's literally twice the size. But with a little bit of putty, it's not a big deal. And if you've never heard about this moldable duct tape, I recommend checking out my review on how handy and reusable it is. The brand that I tested and used for years personally, aka I know it actually works, is in the description. The carabiner is obviously small and somewhat awkward to handle. Still, probably big enough to put on your bag, backpack, pants, or maybe even in your purse. And the built-in kickstand gives you 13 options to choose from. Last but not least, the built-in magnet. Comes in handy and holds real tight. A pleasant surprise at this price point is the inclusion of a Type-C charging port. As many of the smaller, more affordable gadgets still use micro USB, like many of these humidifiers and fans that I'll soon be reviewing. So yeah, it's hidden behind this flap, alongside with this battery charge indicator. Some say it's fully waterproof, while others that has some sort of IP rating. Personally, I have used it for over half a year, going through snowstorms, showers, uh, not this kind, uh, the ones where you get drenched in a few minutes from the rain variety, and as you see, it's still kicking. I've been also conducting very comprehensive bottle opener testing, and even though I can open them with my knife or teeth, Sometimes having a more civilized method is appreciated. Color temperature. A key does it look warm and yellow or cold and blue. It bounces on pure white going a tad cooler. So back to brightness. It's very tricky to film. What our eyes see differs from what the camera can capture. And our eyes can be deceiving or rather adaptable. Without having a baseline, it's almost impossible to compare. Something I faced during my nightlight reviews. 
And let's do a little experiment before I show you the actual numbers. In this clip you're watching, do you notice something? Let's try another one. Anything got your attention in this one right here? Don't be sad if you don't. Most, if not all reviewers didn't catch it either. Which makes me question, are they blind or just ignorant? I guess selling out should also be considered. I mean, you don't exactly need expensive equipment or charts to notice the huge nosedive in brightness. Yet watching dozens upon dozens of reviews, no one did. Setting up the shot, dialing in the settings takes more than a minute. And you would notice that the exposure has changed. There's just no way you don't. Which means they deliberately ignored it. Or used the light for less than 3 minutes. Much testing. Wow review. And this is true for all the modes. They all take a plunge after about the same amount of time. So it's not about the heat. In fact, if you power it via USB, it shines at the highest level for hours. Turning it off and on gets you back at maximum. Until the battery starts to bleed. It starts to drop down to a lower ceiling after you usually start. That being said, it's actually not that bad. It's just the fact that it's not being disclosed. Not on the product page, not in the reviews. Another downside of these lights is the crazy PVM. Like, comment, subscribe and donate for more honest reviews. I'll train, signing out.